seven different ferries, three different Hebridean islands, all in roughly as many days. That's the plan for this ride. Oh, and also the start of what could be a long-term project. I'll whiz down the busy Isle of Mull to climb into the hills behind Oban for a superb wild camp. A fast boat takes me to the rugged Isle of Jura, where the rain, midges and ticks are less welcoming. I think it's actually clinging to a bit of grass out there. On the whiskey Isle of Isla, things go wrong. The ferry that was going to take me north to Oban has been cancelled. It's just not running. The alternative is bikepacking, fully loaded, the longest distance I've ever attempted in a single day. The adventure continues. We've got a ferry crossing to go, so let me explain about a project that I'm hoping to do this coming winter and finish off next year. The North Coast 500 is justifiably popular, but we have a feeling that West is best, with all the islands and some great inland riding too. So why not create a West Coast version of that? And why not make it so only cyclists could do it? I've already ridden local sections of the route in Lochaba and here on the Isle of Mull, where I'm just doing a short hop to reach a second ferry. The Caledonian McBrain ferries, CalMac, are, like it or not, an integral part of West Coast life, an essential feature of the route I'm gradually riding and putting together. It's the section south of Oban that I'm hoping to explore over the next few days. My journey will start on Sustrans Route 78, the Caledonian Way, and that climbs a brutally steep way out of town, but then it veers off and heads into wilder ground. I'm going to divert onto one of Marcus Stitzer's routes that he calls the Argyle Islands. Here's a map of what I hope the next couple of days will hold. I've already used two ferries to hop from Morven to Oban. I'll soon leave the purple line of Sustrans 78 and follow a high route camping on the way tonight. Tomorrow I'll return to the 78 and follow it to Crinan where I'll have lunch. The next step is a road ride to Tevalach and a private ferry to the Isle of Jura, where I'll ride as far as I can before dark. On day three, I'll retrace my Jura ride, hop onto Isla and explore that island before heading to a youth hostel on the west side. My last day will see me ride back across Isla and while I plan to get a ferry back to Oban, it's gonna be canceled and I'll have to find another way home. Well, this would be a lovely place to spend the night, but I would like to get a bit higher. Oh, Steph. I was just doing this last shot and I thought, you know, this is actually quite a nice spot. I think I'll stop here. As it turns out, tonight would have been absolutely superb for a bivy bag, but I was concerned about midges. We've still got them at home uh, and I'll be on Jura camped tomorrow night and they are known there for being absolutely epic. The light is just creeping into the sky. It's 7 a.m. so it's happening a bit later now. It's September. And if I press on, will you wait? Will you wait for me forever? Or would it be wrong to ask you to come with? Maybe I Maybe I, maybe I can make it over this divide Maybe you could be the one for me in which I 
What a spectacular day. And what a spectacular view, my goodness. I'm pretty sure that mountain over there, the twin tops is Ben Kruchen, the, uh, the hollowed mountain. They have a power station built into it and they release water during the day to generate electricity and pump it back up when it's not needed at night. From a 1960s renewable power source to a more modern one, I believe this is the Ben Glass wind farm and it apparently powers six and a half thousand homes. Half past eight and that's the high point of the day. Not too windy considering those things are still turning. Guys, got a job to do. This is all very different, isn't it? So I'm back on the Caledonia Way. That runs from the Kintyre up to Inverness. Uh, and it's a lovely ride. Mind you, that was a very sporting alternative. Okay, should be a cafe near here soon. Open sign, I can see. That's a good sign. There is at Delavik, and it's great. Yeah, this camping, it's really, really tough work. Lots of deprivation. I had thought getting a great early start on the day, I might be able to get an earlier boat. I've just rung them and there isn't one. I've misread the website. <clears throat> Bit of hanging around to be doing today. That has to be the most reasonably priced cafe in Scotland. I'd forgotten how hilly is the road alongside Loch Awe, and at this stage I had no idea that I'd have to retrace this ride in three days. The trees block wide open vistas, but the occasional glimpses are tantalising. A short section of busy road, then I'm on a narrow trail and heading back in time. We are at the heart of one of Europe's richest prehistoric landscapes. 800, 800 special archeological features have been discovered within just eight miles. This is known locally as Temple Wood because what we have here are two stone circles. The northern one aligns with the, the midwinter sun. The southern one aligns with midsummer sun. And if you look carefully, apparently there are very faint concentric circles which are taken to mean the sun. Not allowed to walk on these, they are scheduled monuments and they do feel rather special. There's a traffic free route into Crinan, the small village and big hotel at the head of the famous Crinan Canal. I could have avoided it, but I wanted to check out an alternative route to where I'm going to catch the boat. Quite quickly, though, it becomes clear that it's less than ideal for traveling with a bike. Yeah, it's no good. The, the problem was really, it was going to get very steep very quickly. And that is exactly the point of riding these in advance. Kamut thinks I can go that way, but really, if I was being sent on a gravel trail, I wouldn't want to have to shoulder my bike. I wouldn't want to have to carry it. I'd expect to be able to ride it or at least just easily push it a short distance. It would have been great when I got to the top, according to one of the locals, but getting there, that's too much. Find another way. An easy road ride took me to my third ferry. The Jura passenger ferry runs only in summer, twice a day. It is a powerful catamaran, so it takes just an hour and it cost me 27 pounds. The weather broke during our crossing and it looked like I'll be in for a damp night. Fine, thank you. 20 odd years ago, I cycled the length of Jura on a touring bike and with just one road, there's not a lot of choice. I'm riding what's known as the long road because it is and I've really yet to decide exactly what I'm going to do on Jura. Here are the options. Ride roughly halfway up the island, which gives a real feel for the place, and then take a rough track down to Crew Bobothy to camp tonight. 
Or I can press on towards the north of the island again. Barn Hill is the house where George Orwell wrote 1984. And if the tide is right, I might see the Corryvreckan whirlpool. Although I have previously swum from Jura across that tidal gap. So which option to take? Here's my thinking as of tonight. I don't think I want to go to the end of Jura. I've been up close and personal with the Corryvreckan. You can't get into Barn Hill un unless you rent it because it's a rental house. And the views, well, they're pretty much as they are on this part of the island. So I'm going to try to go to the Bothy. Looking good over there. I mean, it's looking wet, but it's looking good. That way it goes down to the Bothy and it does look promising and I would like to get there tonight. Uh, I need to look at the OS map to see whether or not it's a black dashed line or whether it actually looks like it's going to be a road, gravel road all the way. Well, everything I can find says it's an absolutely desperate <laughs> road down to it, but it looks quite appealing. I'm not sure what to do. I don't want to go to the north end. This is a dilemma, you see. Do you venture into something like that? And if it goes wrong, there might be nowhere to camp because it's trees, loads of midges, no, no uh, wind to keep them away, and probably no light. No, you know what? I'm going to play sensible because it's been a long day. I'm going to go a bit higher, see if I can get a breeze and find a place to put my tent. The grass is soaking, but it's going to be wet everywhere because it's been raining. This is going to do. This will do. I'm going to take stuff off the bike tonight so I can sort inside the tent. In the short time it took me to get set up, I got ticked and I had one I had to pull off me. I think it's actually clinging to a bit of grass out there. I'm really pleased I didn't press on to try to get down to that bothy because this rain would have made the whole thing miserable. And from the stuff that I've read, uh, that trail starts good but then deteriorates fairly quickly. Might check it out in the morning. Conversely, I might just head back to Craig House <laughs> for breakfast. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Good night. It's often only after you've done something you realise how you should have done it. What I should have done is I should have camped at the hotel where I got off the boat. And I should have allowed a day for each island. A day for Jura and a day for Isla. Cause right now there's ordinary people Doing extraordinary things, yeah. One life, one change why you spending at home, waiting alone For opportunity to grab your glance Just make your plans Cause tomorrow isn't promised you ain't owed no strides Guess that's why they call it a lease on life Tell me how you gonna keep on waiting Or do you wanna be the change I'll be back here, this very spot, in about 24 hours to catch the ferry up to Oban. It's a busy little port. Now on Isla, as on Jura, I haven't allowed enough time to see it all, especially if I want to sample a whiskey. And I was trying to decide, do I get to the south end or do I try and find a, a distillery tour? And I realized that that was just taking up my time trying to decide. So rather than make a decision, I thought I would throw myself at the universe. I saw a road branching off and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take that. See where it leads. Many of the roads on Isla are dead straight, but they can be a little bumpy because most float on peat. The same peat which gives the Isla whiskies their distinctive aroma and flavour. 
Yeah, this is worth doing, getting up here. You get a sense of how hilly part of Isla is that you might not see if you were just on the road. And also how wild it is in the middle. That said, it's not wild as in the Highlands wild. This is very much farming country. That, said a sign, is going for my favorite one, Bruach Laddach. We'll be going past that distillery later on today. Sometimes when you don't make a plan, yeah, it doesn't work out and you feel a bit, mm, should have done something. But actually, like today, I didn't have a plan for Isla and it's worked out really well. I feel as if I've seen the heart of the island, I've got myself to Beaumont, it's just lunchtime. I've got 10 miles to go, so I'm gonna get to the hostel early. Yeah, it's a lovely day. The contrast between the shore road on Isla and the ones I've been cycling is marked, although they both have big skies. On the off chance, I call into the distillery that makes my favorite tipple, even though their website shows all their tours today are full. I'm hoping they might squeeze me on, but... Nope, all right. Sorry about that. <sighs> okay. Worth a try, worth a try. Still, it's a glorious day and an easy ride to the youth hostel in the beautiful village of Port Charlotte where I'm going to spend the afternoon relaxing in the sun. Welcome to the salubrious surroundings of yet another youth hostel. Little bit of shock news last night. The ferry that was going to take me north to Oban has been cancelled. It's just not running. And the next one, it's Saturday to do the next one, won't be until Wednesday. So that's not great. So the current plan is to go to the south of the island here, Port Ella, see if I can get a boat south, uh, which will leave me 70 miles to ride to get to Oban. And given I'll be starting at midday, I don't think I'll get that all done today. So I've no idea what today's going to turn up. Confusingly, the different ferry leaves from a different port. Yes, there are two on Isla, going back to when two different ferry companies operated here and wouldn't share each other's ports. Oh, here we are at the other ferry terminal. <laughs> I've never meant to be coming down here. Uh, and it's three pound cheaper to go back this way, so they've given me a little bit of a refund. Caledonian McBrain has had a summer of delays and cancellations due to its aging fleet and the port staff here are used to hassled customers. You've got an ancient boat that not only was cancelled from the run I'm going to do up to Oban, uh, it's also the seven o'clock from here was also cancelled because the boat's sick. So now you've got three boatloads, the ones who were going to Oban, the ones who were going on the seven o'clock and the ones who were on this boat all trying to get onto just one boat. You've got a feel for the guys who are trying to sort this out. Yet somehow they succeed and only a few drivers are disappointed. Well, that brings us back onto the mainland. Not where I expected, but there we are. And time to put the video camera away to focus on the cycling. Much of it on a busy A road at first, then onto the Caledonia Way. I was back at that great cafe late afternoon, and to my surprise, by seven, I was in Oban, where the seafood shack was still open, and I had time to catch the late ferry onto the Isle of Mull, ride up that, and spend the night on the floor of the waiting room for tomorrow's first ferry to reach home. It was a bigger ride than I expected. I ended up doing 92 miles yesterday with over 6,000 feet of climbing. So quite a, quite a day and better that I could focus on that. If you'd like to see a review of the bike I've been using, then do check out this video. Or for more adventure cycling, how about some of these? Give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and I will see you again next time. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you, see you again next time. Bye.